Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome to Arbin Hardware. So what is the best budget 4K gaming monitor in late 2020 and in 2021? In today's video, we're gonna check out the 27 inch 4K monitor that only costs 249 US dollars. We're gonna go over the specifications, colors, viewing angles, black levels, as well as input lag. We're gonna also look at the gaming performance and I'm going to share my experience using this as a gamer. Now 4K monitors usually selling for a lot more and so that makes this screen very interesting but the question, yeah the question is can you game on it and the short answer is yes but yeah there is a caveat the screen is only 60 hertz and I want you to understand this this is not the fastest screen around however if you're not planning on playing you know easy sport like games but rather let's say games like red dead redemption or maybe cyberpunk 2077 types of games where high refresh rate and input isn't as important i definitely think this monitor can be worth considering now i actually reviewed this monitor back in august and three months later and i'm still convinced that this is a great budget pick for gaming as long as you're not that picky Let's have a look at the specifications. So the Philips 27 6E8VGSB is yeah part of Philips E series lineup. It's a 27 inch 60 hertz IPS 4K screen that supports 4K per sub pixel and has a 5 millisecond gray to gray response time, which uh, yeah you shouldn't pay too much trust in. And we're gonna touch on the response time in a second because. It is actually really not that bad. It's selling for $249 on Amazon, which uh, yeah is one of the reasons why it caught my attention. Now at any point during the video, feel free to check out the links the way you can pick this up down below. So once you get the monitor up and running, you'll notice that it's got a black finish with a modern look to it, with small bezels and a pretty minimalistic stand made of steel. It's got a wide enough footprint to not make the monitor feel wobbly. Unfortunately, as for most budget friendly screens out there, they tend to have a very basic stance coming with it, and there is no exception here. You have a 5 to 20 degree tilting, but yeah, that's about it. The biggest shame is probably the fact that there is no visa mount support on the back, so you have to live with this stand as it is. Now this is obviously something that you need to think about upon picking this up. This is usually what budget friendly monitors look like when it comes to the stand at this specific budget. Now thankfully though the stand is far from terrible and in my opinion it's far from a deal breaker but it's something to have in mind at least. And so now I've been using this monitor for about 3 months and while I do think it would have been nice to be able to adjust the height at least, I still, yeah, I still don't think it's a deal breaker. Now for connections on the back, we find two HDMI 2.0 as well as a single display port 1.2 as well as a 3.5mm audio output. And all ports allow you to run the monitor in its native 4K 60Hz resolution with 10-bit color depth and an HDMI cable comes included. Let's talk first impressions and out of the box the colors they look amazing without having to do anything. Now having it standing next to a TN display, yeah it's pretty obvious which one's got the superior color and 3 months in and I'm still experienced you know that wow moment from time to time and the colors and the viewing angles are you know far greater than any other gaming monitor I've been using in the past. Now one thing I noticed is how much brighter this one feels in comparison to my other you know typical gaming monitors. It's got a 350 peak brightness so it's not exceptional but the punchiness from the colors as well as the high contrast makes everything feel a lot more alive. Now viewing angles yeah they're very good as well and here I'm demonstrating using the logom.nl color viewing test as can be seen unless you're getting you know very far away from one of the sides uh, there is little to no color shifting happening which is very awesome to see and it's something that the IPS displays are known for being you know very good at. Now having a quick look at the OSD, there is not a whole lot to play around with here. You got the basic stuff here such as the predefined profiles and here you can adjust things like uh, colors and brightness and contrast. You guys have seen this plenty of times before. Now I like the joystick that is fitted underneath and it makes the navigation seem so much easier than having to rely on buttons. 
for being an IPS display, we generally expect to see great colors and viewing angles, and this is, yeah, where the IPS display is typically very good. However, when it comes to black levels, as well as backlight bleed and responsiveness, and you know, IPS glow, for example, that is typically where the screen falls a bit short. Now, as for backlight bleed, there is some visible clouding and a bit of edge bleed on my particular unit. I'm not sure if the camera is able to pick it up, but it's barely visible. And if you think about it when playing games, uh, you know, when you're playing games with a lot of dark elements, but yeah, generally, this hasn't bothered me one single bit, to be honest. Let's talk about responsiveness and input lag. Now, I don't have the necessary measurements to analyze the latency, but thanks to pcmonitors.info, responsiveness test of the monitor, they calculated a 2.79 millisecond uh, of input lag. And to be honest, guys, while I was a bit worried that this was gonna be a problem, I am happy to report that I've been using this for hours and hours of gaming without ever noticing any delay or input lag, you know, smearing or ghosting effects. And while there is a moderate degree of blurring games, this is however linked to the 60 FPS refresh rate and it has nothing to do with the screen itself. Let's talk about the biggest, the biggest buying argument, the 4K UHD experience. Now 4K on 27 inches give you a pixel density of 163 ppi or pixels per inch, which makes everything look super tiny even if you're sitting fairly close to the screen. And while it is possible to surf the web and watch movies with no scaling, reading text is almost impossible. I recommend having a 125% scaling. Scaling however doesn't change the fact that everything just looks so much more crisp and alive on the screen compared to any 1080p monitor. Now once I realized how much better games can look if you increase the number of pixels on the screen, I never thought the, the difference was gonna be this big. Now, I've only used 1080p monitors before, so going to 4K like this had such a big impact on my overall experience. Now, something worth having in mind though is that, it, you know, as you increase in the resolution, it also puts more strain on your system and in particular your graphics card. Now, I have been using a GTX 1660 Ti as well as an RTX 2060. And yeah, for the most part, I've been able to run many games at 4K with yeah, very good success actually. And all the games such as Halo Master Chief Collection and WoW Classic for example runs great at 60fps with VSync activated. But then you have these more intense games such as Gears 5 and Red Dead Redemption 2 for example. And this is where 4K simply is way too much for the GPUs to handle. So in those cases I do recommend dropping the resolution to 1440p or perhaps even 1080 if you have to. And this is another cool thing with this monitor, it's actually able to use an interpolation or scaling process to map to low resolutions and still use 4K pixels. Now for this to work guys, you need to make sure that the monitor handles the scaling and not the graphics card. And if you're using a graphics card from AMD, this should be handled by the monitor by default, but if you're on the green team, you might want to check that no scaling is activated for this to work. And when activated, while there is some degree of image softening uh, visible, if you look very carefully, if this was a blind test, there is no way I would be able to tell the difference here. And so 3 months after guys, I'm still very happy with my 4K display. Now if Visa mount support is specifically something you're after, I recommend having a look at the AOC U2790 VQ. This is a 27 inch 4K IPS 5 milliseconds. so it's got very similar specs and price. And it also has Visa mount support as well. And if you want to have a look at it, you'll find it linked up down below. So if you want to enjoy 4K gaming but you don't want to break your bank account, this Philips screen is definitely a sweet middle ground. It lets you play 4K at 60fps and if your PC isn't fast enough to meet 60fps in every game, you also have the option of dropping the resolution a bit and you don't have to worry about soft image as a result. Now obviously this screen also works on any console. Uh, such as Xbox One X or PS4 Pro and even upcoming Series X and PS5 will run great on this as well. Uh, once again guys, I want to point out that if you're one of those that want to play games like Valorant, CSGO and Fortnite where low input lag 
is critical. Yeah, you definitely want to look elsewhere. But if you like me, you'd rather play, you know, AAA titles and 60 FPS is fine. This screen can definitely be a brilliant option. Again, links to where you can pick this up can be found down below. Now, if you like this review, please give this video a big thumbs up and let me know what other monitors you would like to see coming up next. Now, Philips is also releasing an updated variant of this called 288E2A. This is not available on Amazon yet, but I think I'm gonna give it a try once it becomes available. If you have any questions, let me know down below. Don't forget to join the Discord server, link is in the description.